Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Mount Zion United Methodist Church on this wonderful, cool day that we have. Um, I walked out the door at 1030 this morning and thought about going back in, but um, Jonathan's not here, so uh, I came. Um, as we continue in worship this morning, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather to worship this morning, open our hearts and minds to hear what you would have us to hear today that we might leave changed to live as more faithful disciples of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I announce the first hymn, I will just warn you, the hymns have changed a little bit. There's a different closing hymn. We removed one hymn and we moved one hymn up. So just kind of go with the flow this morning. Um, but the first hymn hasn't changed. So if you would, as you're able, <clears throat> please stand as we sing the opening hymn. Number 334, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Good morning. morning. Welcome to Mount Zion United Methodist Church. We're so happy to see the sweet expressions on each of your faces this morning um, on this very warm morning. A um, few announcements to draw your attention to. Uh, you'll see some of these in the bulletin, but um, you'll notice that uh, John talked about earlier, Pastor Jonathan's away at Sakahatchee. He and uh, Janet Evett and Quentin Braylon left bright and early yesterday morning and I think they made it all right. We haven't heard a peep from the kids they, since. They did. They did. texted me once yesterday. Okay, good. I did not hear from her after that, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> I, we have not heard a word from ours, so. <laughs> not complaining. <laughs> not complaining. They're teenagers. Yeah. Um, school supplies for Central Academy of the Arts. Uh, you'll see some of the supplies that are needed. So during the month of July, we're um, collecting those school supplies. So, uh, Please note those items that are listed on the back of your bulletin. Um, you'll see in the calendar this week that uh, it actually says this week at a glance that Zoom Bible study on Wednesday, July 3rd, but there is not going to be any uh, Bible study and dinner at the Parsonage this week. Um, we'll resume on July, 21st, 20, July 24th. Is that right? Is there going to be that many weeks off? Is that right? Okay. Yeah. July 24th will be when we resume. Um, thanks to John Evett for, uh, for preaching today. Glad to have him here. Uh, the United Methodist Women will meet July 10th at 10 a.m. And a uh, special 4th of July weekend service. So July 7th we'll celebrate communion and the choir will lead us in patriotic anthems and congregational hymns. So that'll be next Sunday. Looking forward to that. Um, Please note, uh, we talked about this at our luncheon last week, the post-general conference small groups, and there's an insert in your bulletin if you could fill that out any day that you'd be available uh, in person or virtual, whichever meets your schedule best, um, please fill that out and there's a note about it in the bulletin. There's also been several questions. I've had several people ask about 
uh, Sakahatchee, the group that's in Pendleton this week, and our church is always involved with um, that group and helping feed them. So there's several opportunities to help, and I know in the bulletin it mentions uh, we're serving dinner for Sakahatchee on Monday, and the men are actually providing lunch on Monday also, sandwiches and stuff. And I don't know, is Ed, are, are we do, is there another event? <laughs> Right. So it's not the church, but since Ed and Karen are part of our church, through, 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 yeah. So they uh, they provide on the fourth. So um, so really appreciate everyone in the church um, helping with that, those events for the the local group, the group that's locally uh, serving Sakahatchee. Any other uh, announcements? Oh, John Malgram. You have an announcement. Oh, okay. You forgot. Yep. All right. Thank you, John. If you did not hear that, um, some people in our church have already taken advantage of this new way to donate food or items uh, that are needed for Clemson Community Care. And you'll see in the bulletin, there's a list. We have that usually every week, a list of items that are needed for Clemson Community Care. But you can actually go on Clemson Community Care's website, and there's a link uh, to order the stuff from Amazon, and it'll be delivered, and you don't have to go pick it up at the store and take it over and deliver it yourself. So um, just, just a little way to make it easier to donate some items. Any other announcements? All right, please uh, join me for the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Merciful God, the stories of your faithfulness abound, yet we confess we do not always trust in your provision and care for us. We go our own way, longing for joy and peace, but not recognizing our need for communion with you and our neighbors. And yet your love never fails, and you are always at work, bringing us back to you and one another. Forgive us and restore us to the joy of our common life in you. Amen. And now please join me in greeting your neighbor and passing the peace of Christ.
today's responsive reading, it comes from Psalm 130, and it can be found in your hymnal on page 848. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. In the Lord's word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with the Lord is plenteous redemption. And the Lord will redeem Israel from all the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And please stand as you are able for the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen.
this back up from Isaac Hyde. I'd like to invite the children who are here this morning down to the front for a few moments.
690. And it can take time. And that's what I'm going to be talking about this morning to everybody. Um, and I want y'all to look at Jesus. I'm going to talk a little bit about what forgiveness isn't, and then a little bit about what forgiveness is. And so it's hard, and it's hard to do. And I've had to work really hard at it with some people in my life. Um, but God can help you do it too. So just remember when it gets hard, because God forgives us, we're called to forgive others. Can you help me with all of you?
All right, real quick, one thing I meant to tell the children that I forgot to say. So if you were up here for children's time, stand up real quick so I know I have your attention. All right, every eye up here. So the one thing I meant to say is if you have any time that an adult or someone else is hurting you in an inappropriate way, what are you supposed to do? Tell an adult. Okay, thank you. I meant to say that, and I didn't. Everybody understand? All right, we're good. All right, quick story about Here I Am, Lord. So I was on the Conference Council on Youth Ministries when I was a teenager, um, and that was just a state youth council, um, and we represented all the other youth in the state. And we had a hymnal committee when they were getting ready to do a new hymnal. You'll notice if you look at the hymnal, it was copyright 1989. I was in high school during that time, and I was on the conference committee that recommended hymns for the new hymnal, and we recommended Here I Am, Lord, to go in the hymnal. So that's one of the reasons it's there today. It's one of my favorites. Um, and it's kind of known in some places as the Salkahatchee hymn. Um, and we have people at Salkahatchee this week, so I think that's kind of cool that we sang it today. Um, that's why I chose to leave it and not do This Is My Song. So anybody love This Is My Song, I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> All right, so we come to the time where we share prayer concerns and praises with one another. Um, we certainly want to remember those folks that are in uh, Lake City at Salkahatchee this morning. Interestingly, there is neither a lake nor a city there. Um, but they'll be there all week working on homes, um, and so we certainly want to remember them in prayer. I can tell you for having lived uh, down that way in Conway and at Myrtle Beach, um, it will be hot. Um, and so I told my wife to stay safe and most of all to stay hydrated. So uh, we want to remember them certainly in our prayers um, as they serve this week. Other prayers or praises that we have this morning? Yes. Okay. Okay. What's his name? Okay. Others? Yeah. We certainly will, and we hope all goes well. Other prayers or praises that we have this morning? Sure. Um, continue praying for everybody that's here this week. Okay, and her name? Her name is Amanda. Amanda. Great. Others? Anybody here? Any other prayers or praises we have to share? Marissa? Any others? We'll certainly remember you as you travel and as you deal with just an amazing amount of grief during this time. Others? I have a praise. Um, I was put on a pretty strict diet three weeks ago by my doctor that told me I could either lose some weight or go on medication. Um, and I take enough medication, in my opinion, right now. Um, so I went on a pretty strict no sugar, no carb diet, which I'm still on. Uh, just to put it into perspective, I was drinking four or five soft drinks a day. 
um, and hit Ningles about nine o'clock when the donuts go on sale. Um, so, and as of Friday, I've dropped about 14 pounds. So it looks like medication's not gonna have to happen. <laughs> Thankfully, Janet hides all the stuff I'm not supposed to have. Um, she hasn't given up ice cream. She just doesn't share it with me. Um, anything I've missed? Any? Okay, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again so much for this beautiful day as we gather to worship. We come to you, O oh God, with many, many things on our hearts, some that have been named and some that go unnamed. O oh God, we pray for all of those that are experiencing sickness, for those who are struggling with, with disease, for those that are suffering grief from a variety of things, from miscarriages to losing family. We pray for those who will be traveling during the coming days. We praise you for good doctor's reports and good things that are happening in our lives. We pray for those who have surgeries that are upcoming and pray that you would guide the doctors and nurses' hands that they might become the hands of God. I know, God, this morning we pray for those four missionaries that are representing Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Lake City as they serve and will be served this week by the families that, whose homes they work on as they become the hands and feet of Christ to a hurting community. Oh God, we pray for all those who are hurting in our community today those who are experiencing homelessness and have nowhere to go, those who are experiencing addiction and see no way out, those who are experiencing discrimination and see no possibility of reconciliation. And, oh God, we do indeed pray for those in our lives who have in some way hurt us, and even if we're not at the point of being ready to forgive, we ask that you might move us in that direction because we know that that is indeed what we are called to do, even in the most difficult situations, because you have forgiven our sins, we are called to forgive others indeed. We ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived and died on the cross, that our sins might be forgiven and that we might have eternal life. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew, chapter 18. Just give me a second to find it. There it is. Uh, and it's verses... Did I leave my bulletin? I guess I left my bulletin. Verses 15 through 22. I should know that. I worked on it half of the week. I will tell you, um, God does change direction sometimes. I had a sermon written, um, and uh, some things happened during the week that made me change direction. So I think Serena called it Sermon 2.0. So I had 1.0 written, and you're getting 2.0. Um, I had a sermon all written about secrets and how Jesus kept secrets sometimes. He didn't want people to know who he was and how there's good and bad secrets that we keep in our lives. Maybe we'll get that one another time, but not this morning. Um, and so uh, the scripture lesson this morning does come from Matthew uh, chapter 15, chapter 18, verses 15 through 22. Before I read that, I do want to just 
uh, welcome some folks that are very special to me here to worship this morning. Uh, my mother is here, who y'all have met before. Um, someone that has known me since I was a child. Um, Florence Hansel is here, sitting beside my mother. Um, she whipped me into shape when I was washing dishes at the church many years ago when she worked in the kitchen um, and has watched me grow up. And then my son's partner, River, is here. Um, I will give him credit for these wonderful red and yellow cards. Um, he painted them about 8.30 this morning. Um, and so thank you, River. Um, so as you're able, please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson this morning. Look at it this way. <clears throat> if a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him. Work it out between the two of you. If he listens, you've made a friend. If he won't listen, take one or two others along so that the presence of witnesses will keep things honest and try again. If he still won't listen, tell the church. If he won't listen to the church, you'll have to start over from scratch Confront him with the need for repentance and offer again God's forgiving love. Take this most seriously. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. What you say to each other is, is eternal. I mean this. When two of you get, get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. At that point, Peter got up the nerve to ask, Master, how many times do I forgive a brother or sister who hurts me? Seven? Jesus replied, seven? Hardly. Try 70 times seven. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and only God, during these moments, open our hearts and minds that we might truly hear a word that you would speak to us today. And, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are indeed, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So the story is told about a man who bought a parrot at a pet store. The pet store owner said, now I need to tell you about this parrot. He wasn't treated very well, and he has some bad language, but if you think you can handle him, you can take him home. The man said, I've always wanted a parrot. I'll deal with it. I'll try to train him, so I'm going to take him home. God took the parrot home, had the cage and everything set up, put the parrot in the cage, about that time, the parrot started cussing the man out and calling him names. Pastor puts the bird in the freezer. Waited 15 minutes, got the parrot out, put it back in the cage. Parrot immediately started cussing and calling the guy names. This time he puts the parrot in the freezer for 30 minutes. He checked on the internet, said it wouldn't freeze in that amount of time, put it in the freezer for 30 minutes, took it out, the parrot seemed remorseful, said, I beg your forgiveness. I just want to ask you one question. Can you tell me what the turkey did? <laughs> You've probably figured out by now that the topic for the morning is forgiveness. It is obviously one of the major themes in the Bible. It is one of the reasons that Christ came to earth so that we might be forgiven of our sins. It is a major topic in both the Old and the New Testaments. So the first question I'll ask you is, do you know what the first mention is in the Bible of one person forgiving another? Anybody take a guess? Sorry, I try to stay in front of the pulpit because I know about the camera, but... Anybody guess what that first instance is? Mommy, you don't count because I told you yesterday. No guesses? Joseph, when his brothers asked to be forgiven for selling him into slavery, and Joseph miraculously, with God's help and God's prodding, forgave his brothers. 
So in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, forgiveness is mentioned um, a number of times. So I'm going to ask you another guessing question. How many times in the Old Testament do you think the word forgiveness is mentioned? Just take a guess. It's not extremely high, so don't guess four or five hundred. But... Bingo. Who guessed that? You get the gold star of the day. I don't have any gold stars, but I'll buy some at Dollar General and next Sunday you get one. <laughs> 30 times of one person forgiving another. New Testament, take a guess. Ooh, not that high. 50. 50's close. Think lower than 50. 40. 40 is right. And it's mentioned in all 27 books of the New Testament. The word forgiveness is mentioned in all 27 books of the New Testament. So obviously, we're called to pay attention to this topic of forgiveness. I picked today's lesson. There's many lessons in scriptures I could have picked out of the New Testament about forgiveness. Because I think, because with a few others and a couple I'll mention this morning, I think it's one of the strongest statements that Jesus makes about our call to forgive other people. Jesus makes it pretty simple. You're the scripture. Peter asks, how many times do I need to forgive someone who hurts me, a brother or sister? Seven times? And Jesus shook his head, says, no, Peter, not seven, but 70 times seven. And as Isaac quickly pointed out, that's 490 times. And what Jesus meant by that was every time. And that's hard. Because we've all been deeply hurt. We've all experienced trauma. We've all experienced people that have done things to us that don't seem remorseful. That don't seem to care. And so this idea of forgiving them is hard. But... If you look at the life of Jesus, he lived forgiveness in his life. The greatest two examples that I could think of came during the crucifixion. And so I'll share those two with you. You will remember that as Jesus hung on the cross, dying for our sins, that he said to the thief on the cross beside him, you are forgiven. And today, what? you will be in paradise with me. And then, somehow, miraculously, in the most weak and painful moment of his life, Jesus practices forgiveness. And at that same moment, as Jesus was preparing to take his very last breath, he looks to the heavens and proclaims, Father, Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Now just think about that for a second. He had been nailed to the cross. He had a spear stuck in his side. He had been given vinegar to wash his mouth out. And in that moment of pain, humiliation, and death, he practices forgiveness. And he was practicing forgiveness for all those who had a part in his crucifixion. The Jews, the Romans, Pilate, everyone. He forgave them hanging on the cross, one and all. And I'm not sure there's a much deeper hurt than someone putting you to death. And we really don't need to look any further than the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, that we recited today and every Sunday as we pray, God, forgive us our trespasses or our sins as we forgive those that trespass or sin against us. Is it easy? No. But it is what we are called to do as disciples of Jesus Christ, to forgive as we are forgiven. Now quickly, 
I want to share with you a few things that forgiveness is not. Because I think there's some misconceptions out there about what forgiveness is. Some practical things I want to share with you. First of all, forgiveness is not an emotion. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is a verb. Forgiveness requires action. It's something you do, not something you feel. Because I believe if forgiveness were a feeling or an emotion, I'm not sure any of us could ever successfully forgive someone that's hurt us. Or that we could ever practice Christian forgiveness. So I want to share with you a few things that forgiveness isn't. Forgiveness is not forgetting. That old saying, forgive and forget, I don't go along with that. Because if someone's hurt you very deeply, you may never be able to forget it. But you can forgive with God's help. You may never forget that hurt. So it's not forgetting. It's not putting your trust back in that person. Forgiveness is not trust. You may eventually learn to trust that person again, but you may not. Forgiveness is not reconciliation. Reconciliation is a two-way street. Forgiveness only takes one person. Forgiveness is not silent. You don't wait on the other person to say, I'm sorry, before you forgive. Because you might be waiting for the rest of your life. The person that caused the hurt may not care and may not ever say, I'm sorry. And finally, forgiveness is not saying that everything is okay. Forgiveness is not saying that everything is okay. What happened, the hurt that came to you, is not okay. You're simply releasing the hurt. So I hope that's helpful. So in the last little bit of time that I have, I want to share with you some biblical steps to forgiveness or some laws of true forgiveness. And there's five, and I'm not going to take a lot of time to go through them because I think you'll get them pretty quick. True forgiveness must be inspired. And I think it's inspired by God. True forgiveness can never be bought, sold, or bargained for. No matter how much somebody begs you for forgiveness, it has to be inspired. You have to be led or inspired to forgive that person. There's no hierarchy in forgiveness. There's no mistake is too small or too great to be forgiven. Just like there's no sin that's any better or worse than another. And that's hard to hear. There's no difference in sin and me telling a lie walking out the church door as the person who gets, commits murder across town. And there's no hierarchy in forgiveness either. True forgiveness is freely given as a gift of love, of the love that inspires it. True forgiveness is freely given as a gift of the love that inspires it. Since the source of true forgiveness is our forgiveness that comes from God, no one has to earn forgiveness. It's not something that's earned. Nobody has to jump through hoops or say, I'm sorry, over and over and over again to earn forgiveness. True forgiveness is freely given. Fourth, true forgiveness, please hear this one. True forgiveness frees the forgiver and the forgiven. Frees the forgiven and the forgiven. Both are released from the effects of the mistake, from the emotions that come from it. Because that's really what happens when you're hurt by somebody. It stirs your emotions and keeps you in that emotional space. And finally, true forgiveness is also an act of self-love. It's also an act of self-love. It's something you do for you, not the other person. The other person may not ever know that you've forgiven them. 
It's something you do for you. I heard this great quote one day. Um, I'm not a Dr. Phil fan, but I guess I was flipping through the stations and I saw uh, a guy that I recognized by the name of T.D. Jakes. Do any of y'all read any of T.D. Jakes books or know who T.D. Jakes is? He's a bishop in the church that he serves. Um, he's written hundreds of books. And he wrote a book all about forgiveness. And the quote he said on TV was this. He said, not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and waiting on the other person to die. Not forgiving is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Forgiveness really, at its base, is about the forgiver. I'm coming to a close. True forgiveness is hard. The hurts that come to us from the words or actions of other people can be deep and extremely hurtful. And I'm not disregarding that this morning. I'm not saying that, that the hurts you've experienced or the wrongs that have been done to you aren't deeply hurtful and deeply emotional and deeply scarring. Sometimes it can take a long time to practice forgiveness. I'm not saying you have to walk out of church this morning and forgive that person that's hurt you. It may take a long time. For me, the deepest hurt, I'm not going to get into details, that came to me many years ago, took a lot of prayer, many years, and even outside help through therapy to achieve forgiveness. I was finally able to do it, but it took years and years. With God's help and with an outside help, I was able to do it. So I ask you this morning, as painful as it may be, what is your deepest hurt? Where is it in your life that you need to practice that Christian forgiveness? That the forgiveness that ultimately you need to do for yourself? Because ultimately, we are called as disciples of Jesus Christ to practice true, radical, and unconditional forgiveness. Jesus gave us the example to follow. Father, forgive them. And we are called to follow that example. I want to share with you in closing this story. And I don't read a lot in my sermons, but her words are better than mine. So I'm going to share these words with you. They come from a book called The Hiding Place. Have any of you read this book? I knew my mom read it, Sharon. I guess maybe it was a United Methodist women's book sometime. My mom's shaking her head. Um, it's by Corey Ten Boom. Um, and I just want to share it with you. She was a prisoner in a German concentration camp. And she shares this story in that book. She says, it was in a church in Munich where I was speaking in 1947 that I saw him. A balding, heavyset man in a gray overcoat, a brown felt hat clutched between his hands. One moment I saw the overcoat and the brown hat, the next a blue uniform and a visored cap with its skull and crossbones. Memories of the concentration camp came back with a rush. The huge room with its harsh overhead lights the pathetic pile of dresses and shoes in the center of the floor, the shame of walking naked past this man. I could see my sister's frail form ahead of me, ribs sharp beneath the parchment of skin. Betsy and I had been arrested for concealing Jews in our home during the Nazi occupation of Holland. This man had been a guard at Ravensbrück concentration camp where we were sent. Now he was in front of me, hand thrust out, a fine message, Fraulein, how good it is to know that, as you say, all our sins are at the bottom of the sea. It was the first time since my release that I had been face to face with one of my captors, and my blood seemed to freeze. You mentioned Ravensbrück in your talk, he was saying. I was a guard there, but since that time, he went on, I've become a Christian. I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things I did there. But I would like to hear it from your lips as well, Fraulein. Again, the hand came out. Will you forgive me? And I stood there 
and could not. Betsy had died in that place. Could he erase her slow, terrible death simply for the asking? It could not have been many seconds that he stood there, hand held out, but to me it seemed hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I had ever had to do. For I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgives has a prior condition, that we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, Jesus says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Still I stood there with the coldness clutching my heart. But forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Jesus, help me, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started in my shoulder, raced down my arm, sprang into our joined hands, and then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried with all my heart. For a long moment, we grasped each other's hands, the former guard and former prisoner. I had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God,